we have with us tonight Jacques Madison, who is the deputy leader of the Estonian Conservative Party, and he is also uh, a member of the European Parliament for Estonia. Anyway, thanks so much for Gregory. Uh, we had a great discussion already for, for over two hours about Russia. Uh, so, you know, that matters for us. Uh, also, Andrew was waiting for me for two hours in the uh, in airport. I told him that I would arrive sometimes, so he didn't know exactly when to come. So I said, well, you have time so much, so you're a British guy. Uh, anyway. Uh, and, and the good thing is that I'm the probably only one tonight here who's wearing the British uh, colors, right? You know, the red, blue and white. Nobody of you. <laughs> because I'm just a traditional politician, you know, that, uh, and, uh, and it was difficult for me to wear a tuxedo because I have to fly tomorrow to Tunisia to take care of the migrants and the human rights. It's very important, you know, in Africa uh, 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 uh. to spread, uh, spread EU values all over Africa. Uh, yeah. <laughs> But anyway, just uh, because I'm a member of the Human Rights Committee in the European Parliament, and they have a mission for three days uh, to Tunisia, uh, so uh, that's why we are always trying to be represented in these kind of missions, because otherwise you give the floor only for the left wing. And at least when you're participating there, you can always give your own opinion and say that maybe it's not our business to go to spread our own so-called values to Africa. Uh, just like... just. Take your resources, and so yes. Anyway, joke, joke, joke. Uh, uh, but we are just, uh, I was asking before, like, Gregory, what are the biggest topics uh, in the UK? Uh, and what are the biggest conflicts here uh, in the geopolitics, uh, in the cultural politics, in the society? And we totally agreed uh, together in, in some things. Not in all, all things, of course, I'd say. Not in all things. But I have to say that I was always right. He was wrong. Uh, uh, but, uh, but he will understand this in the morning. Uh, but what we understood very clearly, that if we see like, the reactions between the big global players, we talk about the US, EU, China, Russia, then we are... A th Okay, UK is a bit bigger than Estonia, a bit bigger, uh, not, not so much, but a bit bigger. Uh, just the fifth economical power in, in, in the world, but uh, anyway, a bit bigger. But we are still like in the middle of the conflicts. And, uh, and I've seen several times in the European Parliament that the people from the left side and from the right side, they're always playing like a very simple game that there is only like the good things what comes from the US and the bad things come what comes from the East. I personally I see also many good things what comes from the US. And I see also like some good things what comes from Russia. There are not so many, only a few. Mostly bad things. <laughs> but there are also some good things. Uh, so that's why I think that we are sometimes also as a politicians uh, and also as a average citizens in our countries, we are taking everything very black and white. And for, as I'm from Estonia, you know, population is about 1.3 1, 1. million. Actually, Kruger thought it's 1.5 million. I have to correct him. I say, no, <laughs> you're very wrong. It's only 1.3 million. And the real Estonians, we have about 950,000. So it's just a very small part of Berlin or London. Uh, so very small, tiny country. And, uh, and of course, you are between the west and the east, uh, between the south and the north. So you're together with Finland, Sweden, Russia, Latvia. Germany is not very far away. Uh, so you're always trying to balance your policy between those big powers. And what I've seen also with the conservatives and the right wing uh, in Europe and also in the US, there's like very black-white relation about the geopolitics. Like from US, it comes all the LGBT ideology, all the left wing uh, uh, policy and all the pro-migration uh, way. Uh, from Africa, from Middle East, and on the same time, like the Russia and the China is protecting like the traditional family values and like normal conservatism. And then I'm trying to argue sometimes with with even my own friends that well, it's not so black and white, because like even like I've I've very many good friends in the U.S. and and even like in 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 America, there are like also of course there are left wing. There's a Hollywood, of course, but the main point is we have to destroy this. So it means that the commonly, the U.S. is not your enemy, 
because if you if I look in Texas, I have uh, some uh, good uh, friends who are in the Senate of Texas, and uh, they are very pro-family, very right-wing, and uh, doesn't care about Hollywood. Uh, same thing in Florida, like they're very anti-migration. At the same time, they're very for pro-gun rights, uh, pro-freedom, freedom of speech. So I think sometimes we are taking also like the Americans are like the one big enemy. We're like just promoting the LGBT things and the Hollywood. So, but the biggest mistake is that we are taking them as together, but they're not together, just like they are different ideologies. Uh, on the same time, uh, I see sometimes as a Russia that who's protecting the family rights and traditional values. Well, for me it's a bit complicated because like if I look on the numbers and statistics, I think even Italy is more conservative than Russia in the family policy. And if you look at like Christianity, like we all share here Christian values. Like I'm Christian. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry I'm not in the, in the English church. Uh, I'm just like, you know, typical German uh, Lutheran, uh, so, oh, what a uh, <laughs> so uh, and, uh, and, uh, and I'm not orthodox, but if you look on the, like, the basic values, what which countries are sharing together, then um, if you look at the Russia, of course, then I couldn't really understand how the Christians could send the Muslim radicals from Chechnya to the war yeah. against Christians in Ukraine. How they could accept the huge migration from the Muslim countries to Russia, and this time, and this, in this case, I'm just like very confused sometimes when I'm discussing with, uh, with a, also with my own colleagues and my own allies in the European Parliament that it doesn't match together, like this ideology that they are like the protecting the like the Christian values and the family values. Uh, so finally, the, always the question is about geopolitics, about the interest about the territories, and that's understandable. I think if I, if I will live in Germany, I will uh, say that actually some part of French, actually they are part of Germany historically. Uh, so it's understandable. If I will live in, uh, if I will live in the US, of course I will have all interest uh, against China, against uh, Russia, uh, against North Korea. And if I will be Russian here today, then I will say that, well, you see that actually some of our neighborhood countries have been historically always part of our great empire and actually yeah we have to protect our own russian nationals there like in in ukraine or in latvia or in uh, or in estonia and if finland will be part of the nato then it's a huge security threat against russia i will tell this story then but of course i'm sharing my point of view and that's why i'm of course i'm not very neutral because have you ever seen neutral politician <laughs> uh, or honest politician. I try to be honest at least. Uh, so uh, uh, I try to be honest. Uh, of course, our point of view as a, as a right-wing conservative party from Estonia, and we have very good cooperation also with the Italians, with the Germans, with the French, uh, with the Finns, with the Swedish. Our point of view is that we have to balance in Europe with the right-wing powers the power game between the East and West, because the both sides have their own interests. I think Americans have, have no, no idea, actually, to protect with all their own lives, our lives. Absolutely. Well, really, like, and if I'll be American, like, if I'll be like the taxpayer or, or the farmer in, farmer in uh, South Carolina, I really wouldn't care that because I have no idea where's the Ukraine, where, is it in uh. Africa or like <laughs> far away? I'm, I have to pay my taxes to the left-wing government in the U.S. The gas prices is just going up. I have to take care of my kids. Of course, like you should care. If I were like, uh, if I were living in, in in Africa, I, I wouldn't care about all the problems like uh, in Asia. And same thing, like we have to, on the same time, we have to understand, like in Europe, that there is no other big players in the world who really care about our own problems. We just have to play all some. We have to play the game where we can use the good things from the both sides, where our interests are in common way going. And in this time, of course, I have to say, like, I'm, I'm more than happy that Finland and Sweden have uh, decided to join with NATO. It's like, for us, it's like very important in a security way, because in this time, we're going to have a very good allies in the North and Eastern uh, Europe. And it doesn't matter about Americans. It matters that we are together there in the same union. 
And even if the Americans are too afraid sometimes and uh, they are caring, you know, they care more about LGBT people and it's very important, of course. Uh, so they have to take care of them. Uh, so uh, at least we can be together in our own region with our own partners. And, and that's why I see, like, I've, I've been thinking a lot about, uh, about the balance of the power. Like, which country is going the best way today? to balance the huge influence what comes from the Western countries, especially from the US, from the Hollywood, and who's balancing the best way the security threat what comes from Russia and China. Hungary, probably not. Actually, I, 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 I'm, I, I'm the big friend of uh, Hungary, and I really like Mr. Orban. <laughs> I think with a family policy, I have to say that he took over our promise what we did in 2015, before the elections, to support all the young families to compensate your house loan. That with every kid, we will compensate by the government 25% of your house loan. It means that if you're gonna have four kids, you have a free house. Of course, with average price. Like, it doesn't matter. like if you're gonna buy like, well, like two million euro uh, villa, villa somewhere, we'll not pay for this, uh, for taxpayers' money. But the idea is, to help all the young families to have more kids. Because only in this way we're gonna have saved our Europe. Yeah. yeah. And that's a pro family policy. I love the way how they are actually just they're screwing the European Commission. Wonderful way. Absolutely. <laughs> we are just applauding to them all the time. Uh, how they are controlling the migration. They built up the huge wall 2015-16 <coughs> with two billion euros. And nobody even get a tax from the European Commission that you are protecting the foreign, foreign border of the EU. And they close the border and say, no, they are illegals. They are absolutely illegals. We have no duty to open the border for all the strangers. And they saved us. Today, with the defense problems, of course, I don't agree with them in most things. Uh, but if you look at the European countries, what I really like, and I know you like them also because you have very many workers from this country, you know. Probably you know already from the Eastern country, you know, like all the house workers and I think you had millions of them from Poland. So, <laughs> so uh, I, I think you have like a personal feeling with them. Uh, I, I'm not the biggest fan of Poland. It's like, well, I'm from Estonia and, you know, like I like more Finns and Latvians. You know, they're like the small, good neighbors to you and, you know, you can hang out with them. Poland is too big for us. Uh, but if you look on the, on the geopolitics, how they're dealing with a left-wing ideology and at the same time with the defense and security problems, that's the right way. That's a pretty right way. If you look at the family policy, what the Poland is doing, they say that no LGBT propaganda in the kindergartens. No way. I don't... <laughs> How they're supporting the young families, how they're controlling the migration, and they don't care about the U.S. embassy in Warsaw, what they are telling. They say no, we are a sovereign, free country. We do whatever we want. It's our internal policy, and that's the right way to go. <laughs> on the same time, if you look on their defense policy, they're actually, actually uh, sorry to my German friend, but I think their army could be ready to invade in two days Berlin because they have invested a lot to defense. Hopefully they will not invade Berlin, I like Germans. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but of course we know very well why they are prepared for the last 30 years. Just to be ready for everything. On the same time hoping that nothing will happen. Civis pass and barabellum, as they said in a long time ago. And that's the way how to go. You balance the left wing ideology, what comes from the US, Hollywood, from the European Commission. At the same time, you balance the risk, what comes from the East. Because you know, we have the old sentence in Estonia, never ever nothing good comes from East, even the wind is cold. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, <laughs> so, uh, and, uh, and that's why we, we try to also balance with our party the policy in Estonia. As, uh, as I think, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that we are the only party in Estonia who says loudly out that no way to the gay marriage. I have nothing against the gays, Jesus Christ. I have some friends who are gays, but the good thing is they are not going to the street. 
they're not screaming, I'm gay, I need special rights, I need kids. I'm always making jokes with them, that how are you going to have a kids? How? <laughs> like, I was at school, like, uh, like a few years ago, because I'm really young still, and well, uh, I studied in school that, well, just in a biological way, it's pretty important, you know. So, <laughs> but they're good friends of mine. They're really good friends, they're normal, and I, I, probably they're even voting for our party. Even if we were saying that's no way to the marriage, because, well, you understand some basic principles of the society, how it's working together, so it doesn't work. But just, if you, if you want to sleep with someone, it's not my business. Jesus Christ, go ahead. Uh, but if we look on the society, we have to protect like the, just like the principal values, because it keeps together, our society. It keeps strong. We, we are, I think we are the only ones who are saying that no way to the migration if there is no need for this. And before I was talking with Andrew in the train, and when I was looking at the paper, what he just showed you, about the Ukrainians who are coming. We had a great discussion about this. And I said, that's the, a bit small difference in Estonia. Uh, I think we have now from Ukraine, we have people who represent now 2.5% of the population. So it's about 30, 40,000 people from Ukraine. And about 90% of the population are supporting this. Because the, the main difference is that in 2015, 16, when we had this Angela Merkel cows in Europe, uh, who opened the borders for everybody from Africa and Middle East. The biggest difference is that today, okay, we see okay, they're pretty much refugees, mostly women and kids, understandable. So, of course, we can host them. We can take them for one or two years. But what I really don't understand, or what I really don't like, that like in the UK, it's the same like in the most of the countries. You treat the people who are refugees. You can be a refugee, okay. I'm sad for, I'm really sorry for this, and it's a terrible story that you have to escape your home. And, and I think nobody of us will, will like to escape your home if your bombs are coming down uh, to your house. But it doesn't matter because you don't have any more special rights as your own citizens. Because like every government should take care of your own citizens first. Mm. Yeah. And then of course, I'm more than ready to help anyone who really need help. But only in the limit what is our own capacity and the amount of the people what we can take. In Estonia we can manage with this 2.5% of the population. Yes, we can manage this. But at the same time, it's not right to give them more rights, like access to a dentist, access to the, all the services, what you don't own people doesn't have. Because there's a question like, okay, why, why do we need this country? Why? For who? For all the migrants, the refugees from the world? world? Uh, so, in this question, I'm absolutely in favor to help the real refugees. Like we said also like with our Conservative Party 2015-16, if the real refugees really escaping from the war, of course, I'm ready to help for, for those people, I'm ready. But the problem is that most of them, they're not refugees, just economic migrants. And today, same thing with the Ukrainians. If you're escaping from the war, I'm ready for help, but it's only temporary, it's only for the time when you really need the help. But let's finish the talks that we have to integrate you. We have to learn your lo local language. We have to take you for the next 10 to 20 years. And we have to get more services and more benefits than our own people has. Just forget it. It doesn't work. So uh, that's why I think it's very complicated uh, with, with those refugee or migrant crisis from Ukraine. It's complicated with the geopolitics because there are like different opinions about Russia, of course, always. But uh, mostly I like the sentence from our own head of the Defense League of Estonia. You know, we have the Defense League of Estonia where you can be a member, volunteer member of the Defense League. It's like the, it's like the army, but it's based on the free will. I'm also a member there. So you have your uniform at home on the basement and you can go to exercises a few times per year. And the head of the Defense League said a very great thing, I think, last year, before the war, war in Ukraine, that to the international media, I think it was like in, uh, to the some kind of U.S. newspaper. And of course, the Americans, they're not the smartest people always, you know. It's, mm -hmm. you know like, because when I'm talking with them, they're like, you know, like, <laughs> like very, uh, uh, just very basic knowledge yes. of everything. Uh, but well, they're just mining all the time. Uh, and they asked from the head of the Defense League, oh, are you afraid 
Are you like really like shaking all the time every day? Maybe the Russians are coming today or tomorrow. Or what are you gonna do then? And he said, like, very calmly, I said, Well, what are you gonna do? Well, no, nothing special. Just they can try to come to Tallinn, but you have to know that they will die here. So nothing more. So that's why no panic, take it easily, prepare for everything, and then you can have a peace. So that's why I think for the future of Europe is that we have to balance the power between the West and the East, and we have to find the way without this American huge influence from the left wing and from the Hollywood, and we have to balance the security risk, what comes from the China and Russia, mm -hmm. to be a global player yeah. with our own values, with our own common sense understanding of our own family policy, of our own culture, of our own people, and with our own capacity for security and defense. That's the only, for the only way for the Europe I see. And that's why we have to cooperate more and more together with the right-wing parties and to keep the understanding, the risks and the fears from the both sides, from the West and from the East. Anyway, I see that you all are eating already, so, and the wine is going on. <laughs> I also wait for my next wine. <laughs> I really, Hope that you're going to have a wonderful evening. Hopefully, we see each other again. Now I met Andrew after a few years again, first time. I heard that he's going to have a great party tonight, so I'm uh, looking forward to for this. <laughs> and I'm looking forward for, the, for tomorrow to go to Tunisia to take care of all the migrants and the human rights. <laughs> Thanks so much.